Hello everyone and welcome to this game art episode covering uh, scene depth, custom depth and stencils. Now we're going to be using these uh, three things uh, in future videos covering more specific topics such as creating a detective mode and scanners and be able to highlight items and enemies. So, but before we get there though, I want to spend some time explaining what these are, how do we basically use them before we go into the more in-depth details. So when you are rendering your game, as you see here, this is what we call the lit mode. So when it's lit, this is what you're seeing basically in game, okay, as close as what you're going to get. And what's actually happening here is that the engine is actually running multiple uh, rendering uh, tools at the same time, well, sequentially and building up layers to get this final output. Now, one of those layers is something called the scene depth. And you can actually view the visualization of this scene depth by going up to here where it says lit and then buffer visualization and you can see all of the various options and you'll see one saying scene depth choosing this and you'll see what is kind of weird but hopefully we'll try and explain it so the further away an item is the more white it is rendered okay so if we get close to this object it gets darker and darker and darker until we go past it and the white turns grayer to black okay and that is basically a visualization of what scene depth is it's a way of recording the depth between the camera and the object or the pixels um via data in this case a scale between black and white now the sky sphere goes all weird like this that's because it is massive so when it goes over a certain distance you start getting these things called fractals um but by and large, you can ignore that. It's not a big deal. It's just the way it just works. The maths behind it works. But essentially, if you just think of scene depth as the closer an object is, the darker it is. Okay. Now, we can use scene depth for various things. And we can use them for uh, finding what items are closest to us and changing their visualization and so on and so forth. However, the strength where it comes into this, though, is that we can actually enable a custom depth pass. So if we want an object to not render it in this pass, but render in its own one, um, we can do that. So for example, let's say we take this box here. If I go to this box and go to the right hand side and find its rendering options. And in rendering, you've got visible and act hidden game. But if you expand open the show advanced button, you see loads more options. And one of those options is says, uh, where is it? Render cut custom depth pass. So tick that box. And then this is actually now rendering in the custom depth, but you can still see it, don't you? That's because custom depth is merged together with the scene depth. So to show you the custom depth on its own, go to scene depth up top here, buffer visualization and choose custom depth. And now you'll see everything that is belonging to the custom depth pass. And again, it works similarly where the further away it is, the more white it is, and the closer it is, the more black it is. Okay, everything else is black, because it's not being included in this render pass. Now we also can use stencils, but more on that later on. So let's use this for something. Okay, so let's create a post process that uses custom depth. So to do that, I'm needing to make my own post process material. So I'm gonna to go to add new material and we'll call this one PP underscore custom depth and we're going to open this up to make a material post process worthy you have to go into its settings here if you can't see these settings just click on the main node and you'll come across an, uh, an option called material domain and by default it's a surface if you click on that you can change it to post process and that will change the material to a post process material now you only have the emissive color as an output. Everything else will be grayed out. And by default, it'll be black over here. Okay, so to see our custom depth, we need to add a input node in here. So right click and search for scene texture. And this node is that buffer visualization broken down into its various components. So with it selected, go to the details panel, the drop down will show you all the various options you have available to you. 
Now, because it's a post process, it means we have to use post process input zero to get the final output. So if I plug that in there, this should look like normal. Hit apply, and then let's go into our world. Now, to apply a post process, we need to use a post process volume. So I'm going to drag that into the world there, and I'm going to go down and it says infinite extent and tick the box to be true. This means that it will make it so the whole world is affected by the post process, not just when you're inside the box. We're then going to go up to where it says post process materials, click the add button and choose an asset reference. Drag and drop your material onto it and now that is now associated to your world. So let's see how to use the custom depth tool. So I'm just going to copy and paste this here and change this to custom depth. There we are. And we're then going to use an if as well to compare it to a value and then do something to that value. So let's set up some basic stuff in here. So I'm going to go into a three there and a three vector there. Let's make this one blue. And this one will make red or pink in that case. There you go. And let's plug that into this one and A into that one. So the if node basically it will compare the top value A and bottom value B. If A is greater than B, it will use blue. And if it is less than B, it will use this red color. So if I take custom depth, but I only want one channel of it, so I'm going to mask this. And, and just untick the G, so we're left with just R, which just gives us one channel. So I'm going to plug that into A there, and then I'm going to type into my constant B here, or you can add a scalar to this. So if I put in a scalar and plug that into B, I can click on that and change this to a value. So let's say, for example, I change this to, um, uh, let's say, 500. Let's do a thousand actually. Change it to a thousand. So if the depth of the block is a thousand away or more, then it will change color. So let's show you this working. So there we are, the block at the red. But if I move far away, you can see it turn to blue. And it turns to blue because I'm now over a thousand units away. And remember, we said if custom depth here is if there is greater than B. Okay, so the custom depth of that block suddenly got further away than a thousand, so therefore it will now use this color. So what happens if we use instead of this color, we use this? So let's swap that out for blue there. And then we're going to change this value here um, to let's say something really high um, let's say 10 100,000 okay if it's greater than 100,000 um, we're going to use this block here and if it is less than then we use this color block here so compile Oh, apologies. Uh, oh, yes, that's because this is a four float. This is a three float. So let's change that to a four float. Shortcut for that, by the way, is holding down one of the number keys and then left clicking. So if you want four, four vector, a floating point vector, then you need to just change that to be uh, hold down the four key and plug that in. And that should get rid of that error for us. So this can take the custom depth of that block, and if it's over a thousand, or no, what's up in here, hundred thousand, then it will change back to the normal world. Otherwise, it should remain red. So let's take a look at that, and now you can see that working. And because it is rendered on a different layer than everything else, you will now see that still through items. Now, what if you don't want to see it through a wall? Well, what we can do there is use the scene depth to calculate the distance between it and the pixels in front of it. So let's take a look how that works. So I'm gonna, again, I'm going to copy and paste another of these input nodes out. But instead of custom depth, we're going to use scene depth. 
uh, where is it? Scene depth. And we're also going to need another one of those uh, for custom depth. And likewise, this is going to be an if statement. So we're going to go right click if, and we're going to mask both of these. So let's mask just the R for that one. And then just the R for this one. Plug them into A and B. So now if the scene depth for this, so that's the objects other than our box, is greater than or less than the custom depth, then it will respond accordingly. So we only want it to show red when the scene depth, sorry, the custom depth is greater than the scene depth, which is going to be this one. So I'm going to drag down here and plug that in. Next, we need the A is B, and that will be equal to your post process. So I'm going to copy and paste my post process input zero and plug that into A is greater than B. Now plug the final result into emissive color and then hit apply. So now it should only render when it's interrupted. Okay. So to recap how that's working, remember this goes pixel by pixel. It's, this is saying when the scene depth, i.e. the wall in front of the box, is going to be greater than the box itself, um, we're saying use the post process. So, for example, when this block over here, these pixels over here are further away than the pixel, uh, is, sorry, closer than the block behind it. And whereas here, this isn't, these pixels are closer than the block behind it. And that's what's happening here. So we're taking the scene depth of the world. And if that value there is greater than the custom depth. So let's say that that's 500 units away. And then the box in front of it is actually 300 units away. So it's closer. Then it's going to use this one. Okay. If it's the other way around. And the um, custom depth is actually, clo uh, is actually um, less than the scene depth. We'll use uh, the red here. And that gives you this sort of result you're seeing here, where you can see the block through the walls. And you can do that the other way around as well. And if you did it the other way around, you get the result you think you would get. So I'll put that in there. And this in here. Now only highlight in when it's in view of the camera. Okay. Um, and that's it really for that. Okay. So the next thing I want to show you is the custom stencil. And we'll do that in the next part, the next video. And we'll talk about how those can be used. Um, other than that, thank you very much for watching this episode. If you want to watch that episode right now, head over to patreon.com forward slash Ryan where that part plus many other videos are available to you, all my patrons. Also, if, I, if you want to use custom depth to create outlines for your various objects that you're selecting, I've got a tool that I made available to my gold patrons over on Patreon as well. So head over there if you want to get hands on it, you can see how it works and so forth. So check that out. Thanks very much for watching and I'll see you all next time. Bye bye.